Good evening, and welcome to the Church of St. Peter. Please join me in singing number 665, Save Us, O Lord, number 665. Save us, O Lord, carry us back, rouse your power and come. Rescue your people, show us your face, bring us back. O shepherd of Israel, hear us, return and we shall be saved. Arise, O Lord, hear our cries, O Lord, bring us back. Save us, O Lord, carry us back, rouse your power and come. Rescue your people, show us your face, bring us back. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening. Good evening, Father. Tonight we're very happy to welcome Father Dennis Robinson to join us here this weekend for our Advent Parish Mission. Father is the rector of St. Meinrad Seminary and School of Theology, where I attended, and where Deacon Jake, who we're also happy to welcome, attended, which means it's his fault how we turned out the way we did. You can think that's good or bad, but it's his fault. So okay. thank you, Father. It's a joy to have him here with us as we kick off our mission at Mass today and with our conferences tomorrow night and Monday night. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I shall point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky 
and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant, I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, They no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, as Father Zach said, I'm Father Dennis. I'm from St. Meinrad, uh, the seminary, their alma mater. This is the best we have. (laughs) Take that as you will. I, I am so happy to be in Quincy. You know, Quincy is my second favorite place in the world. The first place is St. Meinrad, of course, because that's where I'm from. But the second place is Quincy, and I love it here. Some days it's my first favorite place, because right now we're in the middle of February, and I will tell you those seminarians are in a foul mood. And so I was glad to be away for the weekend, but I had to bring one of them with me just so that uh, I would be reminded of how bad it is at home. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here for your mission. Uh, I noticed in the vestibule there are two signs. One of them is for the mission. It's got my picture on it. A picture was taken, I think, in the sixth grade. Uh, I don't look like that now. Uh, The other picture, the other little sign out there is for the chili cook-off. I said both events are bound to give you gas. (laughs) So you can choose one or the other. Now I'll tell you, I'm gonna be really honest with you, we had a long trip today, so this homily is not gonna be long. It's all written on this blue post-it note. Isn't that amazing? I I can't read my own handwriting, but it's here. Let me start by just making a brief observation, and if you come to the mission, I'll spend some time talking about this Uh, tomorrow evening. The first reading that we had tonight, proclaimed beautifully, thank you, uh, from the book of Genesis is probably, probably the most important reading in the entire Old Testament. And and maybe we've heard it many times, we might skip over it a little bit, but I would say it is the most important reading in the entire Old Testament. Because at the end of the reading, you're like, which reading? Uh, At the end of the reading, where we see that what is supposed to happen is the sacrifice of Isaac, but it doesn't happen. It's like there's something that's supposed to happen, but it doesn't happen. And that's so important. And I'll talk more about that tomorrow evening. See, that's a teaser to get you to come back tomorrow evening. And some of you are saying, I'm not coming back. I said, Lord have mercy. But let me spend a little bit of time, and this I'm now on to my blue sheet. Let me spend a little bit of time this evening just 
thinking about the second reading. And if you heard that second reading from the Gospel of Mark, the second reading is the story of the transfiguration of Jesus. Now I'm going to tell you that this is one of the most difficult passages in the Gospels to interpret. It's a very difficult passage. And the reason for that is it seems to be out of place. It seems to be out of sequence. And I would say that for us, as we begin the celebration of Lent, you know, we've had Ash Wednesday. That was a very sad day. Everybody said, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be miserable for 40 days. I'm really happy about that because that's how Catholics are. They're happy to be miserable. And, and so I'm going to be miserable for 40 days. Last week we had Jesus and the Temptations, not, not the singing group, but the temptations that he had while he was in the desert. And that was very Lenten, wasn't it? You know, it's just all these temptations and this desert and there's no eating and it's so sad and it's so making me feel miserable and I'm happy about that because I'm Catholic. And bam, this week we have the transfiguration. And we might be thinking, or maybe not, but we might be thinking, what does this have to do with Lent? Now, I know for most of us, Lent is pretty much over, right? I mean, you gave up stuff on Ash Wednesday, and that's over. You've already started eating candy again and smoking again and doing whatever you do again. And that's fine. You know, we, you know five days of Lent is probably enough for the modern person. But tonight, it doesn't seem like it's, it's where we ought to be. We should have more misery. But instead, we have this very try. I, this thing is just annoying. I feel like Taylor Swift. <laughs> I, I'm not making as much money as Taylor Swift. I can tell you that. I didn't get to, get to the, go to the Super Bowl. But we have this this triumphant scene in tonight's gospel. We have this this magnificent scene. And it's kind of a little bit like whiplash. You know, we went from last week in all of the misery, and this week we're in all of this triumph. And, and, and it's very difficult from glory and last week to this week. It seems like it doesn't fit. But I wonder, I wonder, I, I know, but I, I'll just say I wonder, but I do know, that there's a very particular purpose in the juxtaposition, the putting together of these two readings, the temptations last week, the transfiguration this week, because the temptations, if we, if we really think about it, show us who we are. The temptations show us who we are. We are people who are tempted like Jesus was in the desert. We are people who struggle. We are people who are, if we're fasting, and all of that is very symbolic, right? All of that is very symbolic for our condition. But this week, we are shown something else. This week, with the transfiguration, we're shown not who we are, but who God intends for us to be. We move from misery and despair to triumph. And so these two things are going to be shown to us here at the beginning of Lent as a way of helping us to model, to move forward with our own discipleship. And I, I think that's very significant. But I think the story is also very significant. You know, St. Peter, and yeah, I know he's your patron, but he was a complete idiot, really. You know, he doesn't even look too bright in that stained glass window, I'm just going to tell you. He was a complete idiot. And, you know, what does he say? Oh, let us build some tents. Let's put up some tents, and we can just sit here all day and watch you and, and Moses and Elijah. Well, you know, that would get old after a while, you know, and then they'd want the Netflix and everything else. <laughs> but St. Peter says, can we hang on to this glory can we hang on to this, this magnificence, this, this great triumphal scene? Because that's what religion is supposed to be about. And Jesus says, no, we can't. 
I'm hoping it inspires you, but we can't stay here. We have to journey. And that is so much the emphasis that we should be placing on what is happening to us during this season of Lent. Because it's not about misery, and it's not even about glory, but it is about journey. It's about moving from one place to another, from one condition to another, from one place of misery to a place of triumph. And, and this story is given to us this week to give us hope as that transfiguration was given to those disciples to give them hope. So I hope, I hope, that as we gather here on Saturday evening, that we can see Lent not as a time of misery and suffering, but a time of hope. Because brothers and sisters, in just 30 days, we have the resurrection. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in God's love for us, we place these, our petitions, at the seat of Christ's mercy. For the Pope and all bishops, may they be strengthened by God's beloved Son in all they do. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For all nations and peoples, may God open their hearts to the gospel message we pray to the Lord. For those who struggle with doubt, may they hear God's voice. We pray to the Lord. For this faith community, may the Lord, may the Lord encourage us in perseverance in our Lenten resolutions. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace and stability in the nation of Haiti. May the Prince of Peace be near those living in fear, and may he bless them with unending hope. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, that they may know the glory and the splendor of heaven. We pray to the Lord. For all of our special intentions, especially for the intention of this Mass, Don Vansel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, in your love and in your mercy, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers if they be in accordance with your will. We ask this as we do all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. If 
if you would follow me, follow where life will lead. Do not look for me among the dead, for I am hidden in pain, risen in love. There is no harvest without sowing of grain. All that is hidden will be made clear. All that is dark now will be revealed. What you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. If you would honor me, honor the least of these, you will not find me dressed in finery. My word cries out to be heard breaks through the world. My word is on your lips and lives in your heart. All that is hidden will be made clear. All that is dark now will be revealed. What you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. If you would speak of me, live all your life in me. My ways are not the ways that you would choose. My thoughts are far beyond yours, as heaven and earth. If you believe in me, my voice will be heard. All that is hidden will be made clear. All that is dark now will be revealed. What you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. If you would rise with me, rise through your destiny. Do not refuse the death which brings you life. For as the grain in the earth must die for rebirth, so I have planted your life deep within mine. All that is hidden will be made clear. All that is dark now will be revealed. What you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What you hear in whispers, Proclaim from the housetops. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults 
and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Peter, Meinrad, and Benedict, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Can you get the it's for you? Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word. And where you lead, we'll follow, transfigure us, O Lord. Down from heights of glory into the depths below, the love of God self-emptied, the love of God to show. You light the path before us, the way that we must go. Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word. And where you lead, we'll follow, transfigure us, O Lord. Light for those in darkness, the hungry have their fill. Glad tidings for the humble, the healing of all ills. In lies we glimpse your glory, God's promise is fulfilled. Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word. And where you lead, we'll follow, transfigure us, O Lord. Pardon for the sinner, a shepherd for the sheep, a drink of living water for all who thirst and seek. In feasting at your table, the lowly and the least. Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word. And where you lead, we'll follow, transfigure us, O Lord. To the holy city, Jerusalem, you go, your face set toward the ending, the cross to be your throne. Shall we journey with you and share your paschal road? Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word. And where you lead, we'll follow, transfigure us, O Lord.
Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us, speak your healing word, and where you lead we'll follow, transfigure us, O Lord. We do have a few announcements this evening. Um, first, please join us Sunday and Monday night at 6.30 p.m. for our Lenten Parish Mission with Father Dennis. There will be a reception in the cafeteria on Monday night, and child care will be available in the cafeteria. We look forward to seeing you all there. The Social Concerns Committee will be collecting food items next weekend for the first Sunday collection for Ladies of Charity. Please see the bulletin for more details. Also, please join us for our chili cook-off next Sunday, March 3rd, from noon to 2 p.m. in the gym. And finally, please check out the new Capital Campaign button on the St. Peter homepage for more information about the Upon This Rock campaign. One additional thing to put on your radar that I'm not sure made it into the bulletin this week, but it'll be in next week's. On Sunday, March 17th, at 6 p.m. here in church, we're going to have a family adoration night. So this year we started adoration in our grade school twice a month, and we're going to have adoration available for all of our students or anybody who'd like to come on that Sunday night from 6 to 7. Uh, we'll have confession available as well because it's still be in the Lenten season, so it might be <clears throat> excuse me, 
a good time for confession. And then afterwards, knowing that it is St. Patrick's Day <clears throat> as well that day, we will have a reception slash St. Patrick's Day party in the cafeteria afterwards. So mark your calendar for March 17th and join us for that. And as the announcements indicated, next week's that chili cook-off. If you're not planning on entering a chili, still plan to come uh, and join us. You can get signed up online. Information is in the bulletin. And we'll see you tomorrow night for more of Father Dennis at 6.30. We'll, we'll see you then. Let us pray. As we receive this glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Bow for the blessing. Please bow down for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your begot only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. this time your word says it can be change our minds this time your life could make us free we are the people your call set apart lord this time change our hearts brought by your hand to the edge of our dreams one foot in paradise one in the waste drawn by your promises still we are lured by the shadows and the chains we leave behind but change our hearts this time your word says it can be change our minds this time your life could make us free we are the people your call set apart lord this time change our hearts